what you can see here, see here in the diagram is the fluid mosaic model of a biological membrane. The fluid mosaic model in particular, it allows the protein lipid complexes to form either hydrophilic or hydrophobic gates to allow transport of materials of different characteristics. Cholesterol is a major component of uh, most mammalian biological membranes. It complexes with the phospholipids and reduces the permeability of phospholipid membrane to water, glucose, uh, cations, etc. Its removal causes the membrane to lose its structural integrity and to become highly permeable. So uh, let me describe you about the, briefly about the fluid mosaic model of biological membrane. Uh, it is shown in the diagram on the left hand side upper one, upper diagram. The fluid mosaic model was first proposed by Singer and Nicholson back in 1972 to describe the structure of cell membranes. Now this is uh, the most accepted theory amongst many others and it is relatively new as it came in 1972. Okay, This is the most accepted theory about cell structure phospholipid molecules each one with hydrophobic and hydrophilic end okay you can see it in the diagram on the right hand side upper one uh, each one with hydrophobic and hydrophilic end this makes up most of the membrane the hydrophilic heads from uh, form the inner and the outer surfaces of the membrane and the hydrophobic tails which are repelled by water within and outside the cell are sandwiched in between. This is known as the phospholipid bilayer. You can see the GIF of the same uh, in the diagram below that. So this shows that the arrangement is fluid not solid because the various functional macromolecules embedded in the phospholipid matrix can move about the surface of the cell. Now. Most drugs are administered as a solid or semi-solid dosage forms. Tablets or capsules which disintegrate, uh, the drug is released for subsequent absorption. Many tablets contain granules or drug particles which should de-aggregate to facilitate the solution process. Absorption generally requires the passage of drug in a molecular form across one or more barrier membranes or tissues. Right. So now as you can see in the flow chart, the transport me mechanism is categorized into three ways, transcellular, paracellular and vesicular. Transcellular means transport of drugs across the epithelium, transport of drugs across the GI epithelium. Okay. Paracellular means transport through the tight junctions between the GI epithelial cells. I will come to vesicular in the following slide. But from these two, transcellular and paracellular, I want you to know that transcellular is the most common uh, pathways of drug transport. Okay. Uh, another thing is, when we talk about transcellular transport, there are three steps involved. Okay. The first step is the permeation uh, through the um, epithelial cell membrane. Okay. Cell membrane, are, as we have seen, it's a phospholipid bilayer. So, uh, this, this uh, permeation of uh, GI epithelial cell, okay, this is a major obstruction during uh, drug absorption. enter then it will uh, move across the intercellular space. Okay, movement across intercellular space is the second step. Then finally, it has to permeate through the basolateral membrane. So, the mechanism of drug absorption is categorized into three ways transcellular paracellular and vesicular transcellular is also called intracellular paracellular is also called intercellular vesicular is also called corpuscular okay where secules are formed now let me first talk about transcellular 
slide by slide I will cover transcellular, paracellular and vesicular. Transcellular is further categorized as passive and active transport depending upon the consumption of energy. Okay, Passive transport you see is further categorized into passive diffusion, passive transport, iron pair transport and facilitated transport. There is active transport is further divided into primary active transport and secondary active transport. We will first talk about passive transcellular transport. So passive transport is divided as passive diffusion pore transport, iron pair transport and facilitated transport. Passive diffusion it is based on fixed law. Pore transport involves transport through pores of various sizes. Iron pair transport is seen for drugs which ionize under all pH conditions. Facilitated refers to facilitation by forming a complex. Let us understand them in detail one by one. Passive diffusion is commonly called as non-ionic diffusion. More than 90% of the drugs undergo passive diffusion. The driving forces are concentration gradient or electrochemical gradient. You all know what is concentration gradient. Let me throw some light on electrochemical gradient. An electrochemical gradient is a combination of two factors. An electric potential difference between the inside and outside of the membrane and a concentration gradient. The electrochemical gradient is established due to the sodium potassium pump and the carrier's and the carrier protein's ability to allow potassium to travel down its concentration gradient. These forces cause two things to happen to the system. First, they create a difference in electric potential. The outside of the cell is more positive than the inside of the cell. Second thing what is happening is there is a difference in sodium concentration. There is more sodium outside of the cell then the inside. So outside there is high concentration, inside there is low concentration. Therefore, there are two forces, electric potential difference and concentration gradient that are acting on the system. We call the combination of these two forces electrochemical gradient. Passive diffusion is based on fixed law of diffusion. Fixed law of diffusion states that dq by dt is equal to dak upon h into cgit minus c. Here dq by dt is the rate of drug diffusion. d is the diffusion coefficient. a is the surface area of absorbing membrane. k is the partition coefficient. h is the membrane thickness and CGIT minus C is the concentration difference in GIT fluids and plasma. So as you can see in the points, in point A, 1 is proportional to 5. I have given numbers for everything in the equation what denotes what. So rate of diffusion is proportional to the concentration difference in GI fluids and plasma. As the surface area increase and partition coefficient increase, absorption increases. As the membrane thickness decreases, absorption again increases. This is generally seen for drugs with molecular weight 100 to 400 Dalton. A unique example is cyclosporin A. Its molecular weight is 1200 Dalton. Yes, even then uh, it is absorbed faster from the oral drought. Next in the line is pore transport. Pore transport 
is also called filtration and bulk flow in some books and literature whereas some also categorize it into further filtration and bulk flow there is a slight difference we'll talk about the difference but before that you need to know what is the driving force the driving force in pore transport is hydrostatic pressure or osmotic difference so the transport takes place through the aqueous pores in the biological membrane pore transport is seen in drugs with molecular weight less than 100 daltons sometimes drugs with molecular weight up to 400 but these drugs have to be chain like compounds they are also transported through pore transport mechanism an example uh, of this is transport of urea or ethylene glycol so the difference uh, between filtration and bulk flow is just the pore size in case of filtration the pore size is 7 angstrom in case of bulk flow the pore size is 40 angstrom this is pore transport mechanism next we are going to learn is ion pair transport so the drugs which ionize under all ph conditions transport through this kind of mechanism in this what happens is that a complex is formed between the ionized drug and an endogenous ion so once this complex is formed it transfers through the biological membrane and then dissociates back in example for this is quaternary ammonium compounds then sulfonic acid you see sulfonic has acid has a low oil water partition coefficient but it forms reversible neutral complexes with the endogenous ions these complexes have lipophilicity and aqueous solubility which is enough for passive diffusion the last one in the category of passive transport is facilitated diffusion it has down for downhill transport mechanism like passive diffusion if you compare with passive diffusion the rate of transport is faster in case of facilitated than passive diffusion a common example we can talk about under this category is the absorption of vitamin b12 you know that there are parietal cells in the stomach these parietal cells produce hcl but they do not only produce hcl along with hcl the parietal cells produce intrinsic factor now b12 with intrinsic factor and a carrier this carrier is inside the membrane these form a complex this enters the blood and dissociates back into b12 and intrinsic factor the carrier which was the third thing in forming a complex it remains back in the membrane next in the line is active transport processes these transport processes require energy from atp to move drug molecules from extracellular to intracellular region they are of two types primary active transport and secondary active transport primary and secondary both are further categorized into two two types primary can be categorized into ion transporters and atp binding cassette transporters or abc transporters ion transporters are further of anionic and cationic organic transporters coming down to secondary type they are further classified as symport and antiport transport systems we need to keep one thing in mind that in primary active transport the process transfers only one ion or molecule 
and in only one direction. In secondary, two molecules are involved in same direction or opposite. We'll talk about it in its classification. So when we talk about ion transporters under primary active transport, we need to know that uh, we need to understand it using an example. Okay, as you can see here in the stage one, this this gated uh, transport ADP, ATP loses its phosphate ion to form ATP. So basically, some energy is being consumed. With the help of this energy, the conformation of the left side of the gate is changed as you can see the difference in stage 1 and stage 2. In stage 2 when ATP was converted to ADP the conformation was changed which helped the movement of the molecules from one end of the membrane to the other end of the membrane. In ATP binding cassettes nucleotide binding domains are, are the supporters for the transfer. They can be influx ABC transporters which help the movement of sugar and amino acids and efflux ABC transporters which help in the transport of antibiotics. As you can see in the diagram, these, uh, these have two faces, okay. At the top you see the hydrophobic part, okay. Uh, top is the hydrophobic part and at the bottom is the nucleotide binding domain. This nucleotide binding domain is for the binding to the ATP. In between is the membrane channel. A solute binding protein binds the solute which has to be transported. Now focus on the two diagrams of stage 1 and stage 2 at the left hand side. The solute binding protein directs the solute to the face of the channel, which face the hydrophobic region. This interaction triggers a structural change in the channel that is telegraphed to the ABCs. The nucleotide binding proteins at the bottom face, these hydrolyze the ATP. This sends a conformational change through the channel and opens the lower part so that the solute can enter. ABP plus P is released and the transporter comes back to its resting state. Coming to the second type of active transport that is secondary active transport. As I told you earlier, in secondary active transport, two molecules are transported in the same direction or in the opposite direction. These are called symport and antiport respectively. In secondary active transport, a substance such as glucose is pumped through a region of lower concentration to higher concentration. This requires energy because glucose molecules are transported against their concentration gradient. The energy that drives glucose across the membrane against its concentration gradient does not come directly from ATP. Rather, it comes from the energy stores in the sodium ion gradient which was created using ATP. Because ATP does not fuel the pump directly, this is called secondary active transport. To pump glucose against its concentration gradient, the pump takes up both sodium and glucose from outside uh, the cell and then changes its shape, depositing both the substances inside the cell. A pump that supports two substances inside the cell is called a symport protein. The sodium ions that enter the cell are made to return to the outside 
by the action of sodium pump in counter transport the inward movement of sodium ions is coupled with the outer movement of the substances such as calcium ions in co transport the substance and the other substance bind to the same transport protein here they bind to different protein and then move in different opposite directions this diagram depicts different active transport systems uniport symport in uniport one molecule is transport symport two molecules are transport but in the same direction in antiport two molecules are traveled in the opposite directions let's come to the final category that is vesicular transport mechanism it is commonly called endocytosis also it is the type of transport a drug in which a drug does not have to be in aqueous solution it is of two types pinocytosis and phagocytosis so it is also called corpuscular or vesicular or endis endocytosis this is because it involves the formation of a saccule as you can see in the diagram the drug molecule gets engulfed in the in a saccule okay this saccule which is having the drug in it transfers it from the lumen to the blood via the membrane when the drug molecule which is engulfed it is a solid solute it is called phagocytosis when it is a fluid or liquid solute it is called pinocytosis this is all about the different types of absorption mechanisms of drugs to conclude this is a beautiful diagram explaining different absorption mechanisms what kind of drugs are absorbed using these mechanisms and diagrammatic representation of how the drug molecules are transported from the lumen to the blood via the membranes